Hello Nation. I'm here with my good friend and colleague Jeremy Pettis and we're going to talk about DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. It's a complicated condition but every person with type 1 and a certain subset of folks with type 2 on insulin need to know what DKA is and how to prevent it and treat it. And we're doing today's Edelman Report in collaboration with the College Diabetes Network a really great uh, not-for-profit organization that provides support for uh, college kids with type 1 diabetes. So check out their website here. So yeah. thanks for their support. Yeah, and uh, founded by Christina Roth. Hi, Tina. How you doing? I wish you were around when I was in college, but you were just an egg. <laughs> <laughs> or a thought. <laughs> so real quick, DKA is very common. You know, So it's about 5% uh, or so of type 1s will have an episode of DKA every year. You know, so we kind of think this is for people that you know are bad diabetics or something like that, but it's really common. It's a, it's a killer in terms of type 1 diabetes. It's a very serious complication, an acute complication of diabetes, so we want to spend a little bit of time on it. Yeah, let's start off talking about what is DKA, and I think the best way to start off is to describe what ketones are. Yeah, so ketones, the important thing to know about ketones is that ketones really have nothing to do with what your blood sugar is. Ketones are formed in your body when you lose access to insulin. So your pump falls out, something like that. Your body kind of enters this starvation mode where there's no insulin around, so it starts you know, burning massive amounts of fat. And that fat, when it goes to the liver, a lot of it starts getting converted to ketones. And ketones are, are, are a really good energy source, especially for the brain. Um, so that's kind of why they're generated. But when a type 1 loses, has no uh, insulin around, you start making tons of ketones. That can make your blood really acidic. It can make you sick. It can make you have to go to the emergency room because you're nauseated and vomiting. Um, so that's the problem. Yeah, it, let me talk about the symptoms because it's, it's important. You have to have an index of suspicion. A lot of people, when they go into ketoacidosis for their first time, other than when they were first diagnosed maybe 20, 30 years ago, it just doesn't dawn on them. You feel like you got a flu. You get muscle aches, you feel super tired, you're pasty, and your blood sugar may be elevated, but it may not be elevated. And that's where some people can get fooled. It's a medical condition called euglycemic DKA, meaning just your blood sugar is not that high. And the key is, we all have had high blood sugars from eating a hot fudge sundae. You know, your blood sugar's high, you, you give a rage bolus, you bring it back down, but when there's not enough insulin around because your pump light came out or you're sick and you're not giving yourself enough insulin, you just feel horrible. And that's the difference. Okay, so then let's say your blood sugar's 350, you're not feeling good, what should you do? Yeah, I think that the most important thing is to do is think. Am I going into ketoacidosis? And it, it's not an all or none. You know, sometimes it takes time to build up. Test your ketones. How many of you have a ketone meter at home? I know uh, I have not tested my ketones since I was first diagnosed. Yeah, you know, urine ketones, nobody really does those anymore. Um, they do have blood ketone meters that are pretty cheap to get. The strips are a little bit expensive, but um, you don't use that many. You don't, many you of don't them. need them that many of them, so you can buy a few. They're like a dollar a strip on Amazon. Um, having them, checking them when you think you might have symptoms. If the, the number is over one, that's when you're kind of getting into a problem area. So, all right, so my blood sugar is 350. I checked my ketones there, 1.5 or whatever. What should I do now? Yeah, this is really important. The first thing you should do is give yourself insulin if your blood sugar is high, and at the same time, start drinking fluids, obviously non-caloric fluids. Now, the third thing people don't realize is that you should take carbohydrates and that turns the brain metabolism from ketones back to glucose and that shuts off the ketone production. And I've seen this turn around very quickly, but most people don't realize that if you're sick, your blood sugar's high, why should you be taking carbohydrates? That's really key. So fluids, insulin, carbohydrates. Yeah, and, and the type of insulin is important. And what I mean by that is make sure to use an actual injection or a pen because if you're on a pump, the chances are the catheter or whatever is actually the problem. So actually taking a, a big you know, correction bolus with a, a syringe, change out that infusion site immediately because that's probably part of the problem. Yeah, Jeremy's right. I mean, you know how many unnecessary hospital admissions when someone that's on a pump, they test their blood sugar, it's 500, then they just give themselves a bolus to the pump and it's going into their shirt instead of their body. Yeah. And you can develop ketoacidosis pretty quickly. It could also take a longer period of time if you're just sick. 
And a lot of people don't realize that when you're sick, even if you're not eating, you might need more insulin, not less. Yeah, so bolus, check your blood sugar at least every hour. Keep bolusing every two hours or so until your blood sugar comes down. Ton of water or low calorie Gatorade. All right, I'm doing these things, Steve. Um, how do I know if I should go to the emergency room or not? <laughs> That's easy. If you can't hold anything down, if you're hurling, if you're vomiting, if you're puking, use any adjective you want. <laughs> is that an adjective? I'm not drinking. I don't know. It's a noun. It's uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, the key is if you can't hold anything down, obviously you're not going to be able to get better. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's always good to have that ketone meter. That'll tell you everything that's going on. Yeah, and if you get the ketone meter, just check a couple times when you're normal, you're not ketotic, just to kind of get an idea of what a normal value is. Um, and then just know how you, you know, make sure you know how to use it, things like that. But if you do go to the emergency room, they're gonna do the same stuff. Fluids and insulin, it's just that they'll give it through the IV so you don't need to, you know, kind of consume it. Or yeah, it. You, know, that, you know how that is, being in the ER for eight hours, then getting admitted to the intensive care unit. Yeah. It, it, it's not fun. So I think that's it. I'll give you the honors of the yeah, so I would just say uh, thanks so much for, uh, for watching this. This is an important topic. And with that, we just want to say so long, Nation.